What's good? It's Fever. So I recently got a chance to dive into the action demo for an upcoming Monster Hunter styled game called God Eater 3. It's planned to release in Japan in December and then for us early next year for the PS4 and the PC. Now I've never really been a God Eater fan but I've been aware of the franchise for a while now and have still reluctantly played most of the games because there are so few titles in this genre of game that I adore. Shouts out to the Weeb King Cry who put this on my radar, you'll find him in the video but you can also find him online here, here, and here. With the genre in mind in God Eater 3, there aren't that many surprises. You essentially take on various missions to kill these large enemies. I believe they call them origami in this game. But either way, you kill these monsters, get materials and parts to upgrade your gear, and then take on more monsters, stronger monsters, and repeat that process, trying out different weapons and play styles as you go. The missions are chosen from a hub, and while not in the scope of the demo, traditionally God Eater has a pretty extensive story attached to the game, usually a very weird one that spills over and tries to explain the very weird mechanics and features and systems that are found in God Eater. But we're not digging into the story or setting much in this video. I do appreciate that thematically and so aesthetically, the game looks much different than others in the genre. You have this kind of anime-influenced futuristic take on everything. It's clear to see in the enemy types, which sometimes look like giant robots or demons or just generic nightmare fuel. And the levels tend not to be mountains and forests, but instead cityscapes, tunnels, labs, and even the weapons. This style of game always has over the top weapons and God Eater is no exception, but even with the familiar types of weapons, they look and act way different. Something unique to God Eater is you choose both a ranged and a melee weapon, or if we're going to use the correct terminology, God Arcs, which I believe in general the ranged weapons tend to only have intermittent effectiveness, whether that's a cooldown or ammo, it prevents you from being able to just be in the safety of range all the time, which I don't think was the case in earlier games and might change in the full release through upgrades and progression, but I like just having the option to do something if a monster darts away or flies up, it helps you maintain the pace of combat instead of just playing the waiting game to where they you know, come down from the sky and you can actually do something again. And for the melee styled weapons, not only do they look different, but I guess after Bloodborne people would consider these trick weapons, weapons with alternate forms. The weapons themselves are this weird mixture of bio and mechanical, and you'll see some really cool animations and moves to that effect, all just adding a bit to each of the weapon, which in other games are cool, but typically are much more straightforward and bland and by the book. New in God Eater 3 is this crazy leaping shield charge which covers so much ground, and while I could point out more interesting sounding features like devouring or blood arts, if you combine this shield leap with the mobility of dashes and sprints and the overall speed of the game, God Eater is so much faster than other monster hunting games, and I really want to drive that point home because typically this genre has a slower, more deliberate combat where you get locked in animations where you're constantly anticipating enemy moves and you're trying to take advantage of openings, whereas God Eater stresses the action combat where sure, it's still punishing and can be difficult and you want to avoid attacks, but you also spend more time reacting to stuff as it happens. You can cancel out of a lot more animations early. Your mobility allows you to evade attacks without having planned for it 10 seconds ago. And this much faster combat combined with over the top visuals and movesets and attacks and a kind of speed and urgency to combat just makes God Eater 3 really fun to play. In a different way actually than the rest of the genre. In the past, God Eaters never really felt quite right to me. They've always been plagued by clunky controls, and the visuals didn't match the feel of the game. I think being on like next gen, like a PS4 and a PC, really helps God Eater 3 look the part, and it just nails it. Altogether, though, I find it a bit bittersweet. Because sure, I played the demo, I enjoyed it, I'm excited to pick the full game up, but I know it's one of those games where I'll do a playthrough and then put it down, which is atypical for me in this genre. I've probably hunted a thousand Rathalos in my years, and I think it comes down to that combat where it doesn't rely as heavily on the journey of stumbling into an encounter and then slowly mastering it and learning the little quirks and tells of every monster and how each weapon plays into each of those quirks. God Eater 
plays like a more traditional action game, which is fun, but I don't think will have any longevity to me. I think back to other action games with really cool bosses, and I've never felt the urge to go back and try and master those encounters or get my kill time a little bit lower. So while I'll enjoy the game, I'll just enjoy it differently. A couple of things I do want to highlight. One is that God Eater 3 will feature missions with a party of up to eight people, which is as cool as it is chaotic. And then number two, the level designs have always been, and I haven't seen anything to say it's changed, but corridory. It doesn't make the same sort of fuss over actually hunting or finding or scouting out the enemy or their behaviors or huge environments with all sorts of ambiance and, and critters. The game is its gameplay, which is boss fight, boss fight, boss fight. There's just not a lot of window dressing to the game. So if you have a bar set from Monster Hunter World, a game like God Eater isn't going to reach it. The scope of this game is way, way smaller. Now I'll touch back on the game closer to release when we have a better idea of how progression will go, how many origami there are, what kind of unique missions there are, game length, etc. Since we've only seen such a small amount of the game, so it's kind of good to go into this as informed as possible. But that's going to do it for me. Until next time, this is Fever. Peace.